How many capacitors do you see here? Um, capacitors, these, these box-like things here, these are all film capacitors. There's more of them here, there's more of them here, there's more of them down here. There's also some ceramic disc capacitors, these orangish things here. There's uh, two electrolytic capacitors over here, two more down here. There's, um, I believe there's a total of 113 capacitors on this board. There's uh, 82 resistors, and that is not counting these four eight resistor arrays down here. Uh, there's eight integrated circuits, uh, two diodes. <laughs> there's there's a, a big parts count here. I think this is the largest parts count of any module I've built. So this is the main circuit board, and uh, it is the, the circuit board for the U-Synth fixed filter bank. So what is a fixed filter bank module? You don't see them all that often in synthesizers these days. I'm not sure why, but uh, back in the day, uh, in the times of the old Moog modulars, they always had a fixed filter bank module. There was the Moog 907 module earlier on, and then later on the uh, Moog 914 module. And uh, the U-Synth module that this is based on was designed to emulate the behavior of the uh, Moog 914. What you have in here is you have 14 filters. You've got 12 bandpass filters and then you've got a low pass filter and a high pass filter and these are all at fixed frequencies. You can't change the central frequencies of the bandpass filters, the cutoffs of the low and high pass filters. You can't change the resonance. All you can do is change the amplitude. So what happens is you've got a signal you put in here and it goes in parallel through all 14 filters. The 14 outputs are combined together through attenuators to the outputs. And that sounds a little bit like a, uh, a graphic equalizer. And there's some resemblance, but it works in a different way and it has a different purpose. So what is the purpose of one of these things? Well, if you take a look at the frequency spectrum of an acoustic instrument or a human voice, what you tend to find is that there's bumps in that spectrum. These are frequency resonances they're referred to as formants, and they occur at certain fixed frequencies, and these frequency positions and amplitudes of these bumps will vary from one instrument to another, from one voice to another, and this formant structure has a lot to do with the tonal character of the voice or the instrument that you're talking about. When you hear an instrument, when you hear a voice, when you hear its distinctive characteristics. To some degree, what you're hearing there is the format structure. Now, a synthesizer normally would not have fixed frequency resonances in its frequency spectrum. And if you're the cynical type, you might say, well, these formant peaks, these fixed frequencies have a lot to do with uh, the character of an acoustic instrument and the lack of these fixed frequency resonances in a synthesizer uh, have a lot to do with the lack of character in a synthesizer sound. Is that fair? I don't know. But <laughs> in any case, um, it's uh, an interesting idea that maybe you can add some good qualities to the sound of a synthesizer by giving it some of these fixed frequency resonances similar to what you find in acoustic instruments and voices. And that's what a fixed filter bank is all about. I decided to build a fixed filter bank. This is from a design by Yi Song from the, the, uh, the U-Synth website. 
If you make a comparison, the obvious thing you notice is that this is using slide potentiometers. Uh, the original used rotary potentiometers. A little less obvious, those rotary potentiometers were all panel mounted, panel mounted jacks, and then they were connected to the main circuit board via wires, probably about, I don't know, 40 or so wires connecting the panel components to the circuit board. That was rather more wiring than I kind of really wanted to do, so what I did was I designed it so that you've got um, these uh, headers on the main circuit board, and then there's a secondary circuit board here with matching um, sockets here and here that they plug into. This circuit board carries the board mounted jacks and slide pots and is all just plugs together. And there, there we've got we've got a module. There's screws to hold it together too, but anyway. Yeah, this is the fixed filter bank module. It's uh, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters Cosmo format. It's the second largest synthesizer module I've ever made after the 40 centimeter uh, sequencer. Um, largest parts count, as I think I said. But another change that I made becomes evident when you look at the, uh, the front panel, what's written here. Um, if you look closely, you've got these frequencies and they're different than the frequencies on the U-Synth front panel. So I retuned the U-Synth uh, fixed filter bank, uh, changed the central frequencies of the, uh, the filters. So why did I retune it? Well, back in the 1970s, there also was a company, Surge, that made a kind of sort of similar uh, fixed filter bank module. They called it the resonant equalizer. And I want to read to you a bit from the catalog description of that module. This is what Serge had to say about it. Except for the top and bottom frequency bands, all other bands are spaced at an interval of a major seventh. That is to say, that's um, one semitone less than a, a full octave. This non-standard spacing avoids the very common effect of an accentuated resonance in one key, as will be the effect from graphic equalizers with octave or third octave spacing between bands. Spacing by octaves will reinforce a regular overtone structure for one musical key, thereby producing regularly spaced formants accenting a particular tonality. The resonant equalizer's band spacing are much more interesting, producing formant peaks and valleys that are similar to those in acoustic instrument sounds. Okay, they're not mentioning Moog by name here, but I think they're throwing shade at the, uh, the Moog 914. Um, the, the point is that in, in the Moog tuning, uh, this first band pass uh, was at 125 hertz. The third band pass was at 250. Uh, the fifth was at 500. The seventh was at 1,000. The ninth was at 2,000. And the eleventh was at 4,000. I think I got that right. But um, the point is that as you, as you go f from 1 to 3 to 5 to 7 to 9, you're doubling the frequency each time. Doubling the frequency in musical terms means you're going up an octave. So this bandpass filter is centered on a frequency corresponding approximately to the B below middle C, or the second B below middle C. This one is the first B below middle C, this is the first B above middle C, this is the second B above middle C, and so forth. And then the even ones are halfway in between, so this is, is the F below middle C, this is the F above middle C, this is the second F above middle C, and so forth. So it, what you're doing with this thing in the uh, in the Moog version is you're accentuating the B's and the F's and relatively speaking suppressing the, the somewhere around let's say uh, D flat and uh, uh, G flat or something like that uh, sorry A flat what's halfway between F and B um, 
A flat, I think. Anyway, the um, point is you're accentuating Bs and Fs, and you're suppressing the notes between Bs and Fs. And, you know, maybe you're writing a song where you want to accentuate the notes B and F, but maybe you don't. And that's, anyway, not the point of what's going on with with formants. If you look at acoustic instruments or voices, they don't have formants that are lined up all on Bs and Fs and Bs and Fs and Bs and Fs. And if a luthier made a guitar that had formants that were lined up on Bs and Fs and Bs and Fs and they picked it up and played it, they'd probably say, oh, no, 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 this is all wrong. And they'd open it up and start scraping away until it sounded better, which would correspond to their moving the formants around so they're not all piled up on Bs and Fs and Bs and Fs and Bs and Fs. Um, at least I think that's what's going on and it, it makes sense to me what Serge had to say. So what I decided to do was to retune these things so that instead of in the Moog system having half an octave or six semitones uh, between each pair of filters, I've tuned this so there's six and a half semitones between each. Not a big change, but it means that instead of from here to here being an octave, it's an octave plus a semitone. So instead of this being B and this being B and this being B and this, you know, uh, it's this is B and this is C and this is C sharp and this is D and this is D sharp and so forth. They're not all piling up on the same note in all octaves. And that hopefully uh, gives it a little bit more useful musical quality than trying to do everything at, at octave or half octave intervals. Well, that's the idea anyway. Let's give it a listen. Okay, that's it. That's the retuned U-Synth fixed filter bank module in Cosmo format. And I hope you enjoyed seeing that. As usual, you know, the like and subscribe buttons. You don't need to hear that again. Just hit them. Stay tuned. We'll have some 
interesting other new modules coming up in the near future. See you then on Analog Output.